Today we are taking a look at what might just be the best shots of John Mayer's pedal board that we have ever gotten. These are from the Guitar Magazine Japan issue from March of 2024. As you guys can see, I actually have the magazine in hand. It took about a month to get to me all the way from Japan. I'm in Canada. It took a very long time to get to me, but I have the magazine in hand. I have scanned all of the pages for you guys because some of the images that are in this kind of gear breakdown that they did for John's Blue Note Tokyo performances on the solo tour, some of the images aren't actually posted to their website. So I've scanned everything, I've translated everything for you guys, and I'm gonna make a few videos talking about just everything that we've learned from this magazine. The magazine as well will also be linked in the description down below. The, the website's all in Japanese, you have to translate it, but you can kind of use that to try and buy one because I really think for any John Mayer fan, this magazine is really special to own because this is the craziest rig rundown we've ever really had from John since the actual premier guitar rig rundown that occurred all the way back in the Battle Studies era. It's very uncharacteristic of John to give, you know, a actual magazine access to document his rig in this nature. I actually talked to Jeremy about things as well, his guitar tech. So this is really cool. This is kind of a bit of a piece of history almost to own for any John Mayer gear fan. There are photos in this magazine of the electric pedal board, which we're covering today, the acoustic pedal board, all of the guitars, as well as the amplifiers. So I'm gonna make a few different videos discussing all of those different pieces of John's rig for the solo tour. But today we're discussing the electric pedal board. All right, so in translating for you guys here, it starts off by saying that some of the cables run underneath the board, so they weren't able to fully discern the exact signal chain of this pedal board that we're looking at, but because they were right there looking at it, they could see the cable runs, and then they also had Jeremy, John's guitar tech, to talk to during this whole interview and process. I'm fairly confident their order is gonna be pretty much bang on. All right, so up first we have the TC Electronics Polytune 3 with the electric label on it. Polytune 3 with that bonafide buffer has just been John's go-to electric tuner of choice for quite a long time now. Then we have the Keeley Katana version 1, just a John Mayer staple, and you can see in this image here, and it's also pointed out in the translation, that John's using it with the knob actually pulled out, and I can count on my hand, you know, less than five times that I personally see John actually using the Keeley Katana this way. So pretty cool that we're actually seeing just a bit of a different use of the Keeley Katana. The markers do line up as well at four on the dial, so just some different clean boost settings with the Katana that you can try for yourself if you choose to. Moving on now, we move to the drive section. We have the very first Ibanez TS-10. These shots are so great too because you can just so clearly make out the drive settings on the TS-10s and really all the pedals, honestly. You can see all of the settings super clear, but we have our very first Ibanez TS-10 with some settings for you to try out. Then we move on to the JHS box it later. Now I'm gonna do a full different video on just the box it later because we got a lot of information to cover just from ever since the pedal first appeared on one of John's Dead & Company pedal boards. I'm gonna cover some of the details that were released in this magazine. Just, I'm gonna cover it all in a separate video. So stay tuned for that video when it comes out. But essentially, this is a clone of the Dumble Box Later pedal, which is just a Dumble Later kind of effects loop in pedal form. And that's what Josh Scott built for John as kind of a custom one-off, at least for the moment which we'll touch on in the upcoming video that I have going on. Then we have John's blacked out Klon Centaur, which you can also see settings marked on it very clearly. And then we have the final Ibanez TS-10, which the markings on this one are not quite where the pedal is actually set. Like if you look at the drive knob, it's almost on full, which is pretty crazy to think. But again, you just have some different settings to try. And then you can also see where John's kind of post Klon Centaur TS settings normally are. Now, once the drive section is complete, the signal chain actually goes back to that Boss RC500, and that's what's actually next in the chain there. So you go from the Tube Screamer, Box It Later, Klon Centaur, second TS-10, into the Boss RC500. From the Boss RC500, it then goes into the Way Huge Aquapus Mark II, and the settings on this pedal are really interesting. They're kind of close to what I actually use on my Mark I AP2 version, I haven't owned a Mark II Aquapus in a very long time, but I'd be curious if you guys tried out these settings on your Mark II Aquapus, what it would actually sound like, because I've kind of had a theory, and me and a few of my friends have had a theory that, you know, the thought of what are the odds that John actually had one of his Aquapuses rehoused into a Mark II enclosure just to be a bit more durable, perhaps, with especially the switch, you never know. 
It's a possibility, but I don't quite remember exactly what these settings sound like off the top of my head on a Mark II, so maybe I'll have to grab another one of those and try John's settings out for myself, but I remember them being having to be a little bit more, you know, higher up on the dials to get like the, the same kind of sound, but we'll see. Then you can clearly tell here that the cables do run from the Aqua Plus to the Providence Chrono Delay. You can see John's settings as well as some kind of favorite settings marked on there as well. Then into the Strym and Flint. Again, really clear settings on both the trim and reverb sides of the Strym and Flint. And then it mentions that the Strym and Flint is then what goes out to an amp splitter, kind of so then they can obviously you know split the signal into both of the amplifiers, but that's the very last pedal in the chain for the electric pedal board. This shot is just insane. It's so clear. Uh, I just, it's very uncharacteristic of John to actually allow people to take photos of his rig this clearly, especially for a publication to do something like this, get information from Jeremy on how the rig's being run and then publicize it, make it public. When this all came out, I was very, very surprised because this is very out of characteristic, you know, out of, out of John's kind of nature, out of character for him. He's very private about his gear and, you know, kind of makes us work to actually figure out what he's using. So to get these images, all this detail, it's just an odd time. But hey, I'm here for it and I'm just excited to be making this video for you guys. As I mentioned, I'm going to be doing a video on the acoustic pedal board, how that all is set up with the double neck Martin as well, because there's some differences in the board that's going on in the signal chain there. Lots of cool details for that video. All of the guitars that John's been using on the solo tour as well. Going to do a full breakdown on all the information we gained from that as well. And then the amps too, because there's also a little bit of an interesting detail that's mentioned in this magazine as well. And lastly, the box of later, that's going to be its own video too. So stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video and want to see all those other video videos from the details from this guitar magazine come out that I'll be making. Until the next video, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.